Welcome to Epicenter, the show which talks about the technologies, projects, and people driving decentralization and the blockchain revolution. I'm Felix, your host for this episode. Today we're speaking with Fig, co-founder of Squid Router. Squid is a cross-chain swap and liquidity routing protocol. Welcome, Fig, to Epicenter. Thanks, Felix. Great to be here. We generally start by like sort of going into what got our guests into crypto. So would be interested to hear your background, how you wound up in, in the space. Sure. So I studied medicine in university, which is very sounds very far from crypto. It's really interesting. It's a combination of like really complex systems and you get to work with people, but um, it wasn't creative enough, I thought. You don't want to be on the operating table and your surgeon comes in and he says, I had this great idea last night. Um, I'm going to try it on you. And you really want your your doctor to be doing something evidence-based, following the protocol, like word for word. And so I wanted to try the things. I left medicine and I went to New York and slept on couches to make it work and also started to learn to code and worked as a UX designer as well. So I worked as a developer and designer for different startups for a while. And I was a musician as well during that time. And one of the couches that I slept on was of this like giga genius friend of mine who works as an algorithmic trader. And he um, taught me about markets and how you have all these bots like fighting each other in the, in the market and by the microsecond. I was just really fascinated by how Similar that was to medicine, it's this constantly changing system that you can't really solve per se, like it's always moving. Um, and it's also, you get these symptoms that are the result of the like wider wider world in the case of markets, but in, in the body, it's whatever you've been exposed to in your, in your environment, your diet, whatever. Um, so I got really interested in finance and got a job in traditional finance. But while I got, while I started that job, I also was getting into crypto. So I just started seeing these inefficiencies in my day job, which could be automated by crypto. And I just thought it had to be the future uh, or at least part of the future. And crypto was also super creative. It was um, a really complex system. So it was just perfect and quit my job in traditional finance to go crypto full time. And in my first year out, I spent a lot of time traveling and got really interested in interoperability. Um, I spent a lot of the traveling was particularly to go visit like leaders in the space, people who had designed some form of interoperability protocol or consensus protocol and trying to build up an understanding of these things. And after all of that traveling, I really found like, Axelar's vision and their founders to be the most impressive and the most compelling for me. So decided um, at that point as well, the squid we had met my co-founders and the Squid team had started building. So we we all decided to commit to Axelar and start building on the protocol. And yeah, here we are. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a cool history. I think glad that you didn't become the next Elizabeth Holmes and, and made a Terra Nost. <laughs> like, oh <my> God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so quite interesting how, how the, yeah, there's the like large systems, I guess, generally, like this coordination problems and how, how you can end up in crypto from different angles. Uh, Quite interesting. So yeah, I, I guess you mentioned already Axelar um, and, and a bunch of things that we definitely want to talk about. But maybe, yeah, initially we can just focus on, on Squid itself and like maybe trying to approach it from the angle of, you know, what's what's sort of the problem that, that you saw that, that Squid is in the end solving? Yeah, sure. So like Squid came out of the experience we were all having in DeFi Summer. So in DeFi summer back in 2020, you had Ethereum was starting to get product, well, DeFi was getting product market fit and Ethereum was getting a lot of use. Gas prices were spiking. So, and also these new L1s like Avalanche and Polygon were popping up, Rollup started popping up. And every time you needed to go and try a new application on one of these ecosystems, you had to do all these things to get there. So you needed to bridge your funds over, maybe you needed to get your USDC across you needed to get gas because you couldn't use this new uh new application if you didn't have gas in the blockchain and to do that you had to visit a bunch of new websites you often had to click like up to you know, 20 30 times 
And in crypto, every time you try something new, it's really scary because you don't know if it's a scam website for one, but you don't know if the protocol is safe. And just the user experience in general was was atrocious, we thought. Um, and also we were interested in, we are aware of Axelar and just getting more and more bullish on interoperability generally because it just seemed like there was no other option that these rollups of blockchains would have to form some kind of internet, um, the internet of blockchains, this like vision that the Cosmos has had. And so we decided to build something in interoperability and um, we started with the, the most basic primitive you can have in in really any crypto application which is sending money somewhere and in order to do that you actually need to swap um, and so squid is primarily like the, the core feature is a swap which you can say go from native usdc on one chain to native usdc on another or you can swap to the gas token you can swap to anything um, and then once we have that swap we also built the architecture so it's fully generalizable and you can do payments across chain. So you can do, say you have USDC on Avalanche and you want to buy an NFT on Ethereum, you're able to swap your USDC on Avalanche into wrapped ETH on Ethereum and then purchase an NFT and send it to your account in the same transaction. So we want one click for everything. Um, you should be able to do any action across chain that you would have been able to do single chain. And also we've just brought in everything is in under 20 seconds as well something with maybe we we'll talk about that later but um time is a is something in cross chain which really hinders ux it's a um often 20 minutes to do a swap uh, and we yeah we've done some amazing things to bring it down really excited about that yeah awesome yeah let's definitely get into that so i guess generally you is it fair to say that you are sort of focusing on the layer of like the user experience more like actually uh, and and maybe the developer experience too, versus like you know starting to build like an entire interoperability protocol, which I guess or like a bridge system, which it feels like a lot of the other like systems that do bridging try to do, and then maybe that ends up being like too much f f work. And your your sort of ability to rely on XLR for that part is is what enables you to like improve mostly on on the UX. Is that is that fair? Yeah, I think that's. That's really fair. That's one of the luckiest things that's happened to us or the best decisions is to be, we've been able to focus completely on the developer experience and user experience layer and Axelar can focus purely on the infrastructure, security, um, and openness of their protocol. So we have this really symbiotic relationship with them where we both have the same incentives. We're, allowed, we're both moving in the same direction, but have much more focused um, product strategies than maybe some of our competitors have. And that allows us to to yeah, reduce our scope. And really the whole thing in cross-chain is about reducing complexity. And I feel a lot of cross-chain models actually increasing complexity. We're really lucky to be partnered with Axelar so that we can, we can just focus on very simple as little things as possible and make them work really reliably and quickly. And is it like that XLR that in themselves, like, I guess, how is the difference between like trying to like use XLR yourself versus like using Squid? Is is that just that XLR maybe doesn't have that focus on, on UX or, uh, or you just like sort of, you are more expert, you have more expertise there essentially. Is that what it is or oh. just quickly axlar is a blockchain um it's a cosmos chain which connects other blockchains so every message that you want to send between say avalanche and polygon or ethereum and arbitrum or the cosmos and ethereum now is validated and verified by um the validator set that is on the axlar blockchain mm -hmm. so it's a similar method to proof of stake you have 66 percent of the validators um, vote that something is valid and once they've done that then you can send a message across chains and what Axelar ships with is the ability to send any message across chain so you can call any contract um, and you can also send value across chain you can bridge tokens but if you want to do something uh, as a user that's quite limited you 
you need to take a lot of steps. So you might need to, I'll go into how squid works. This is what we're doing behind the scenes. Say you have USDC on Polygon and you want to get USDC on Avalanche. In order to do it without squid, you'd need to swap your USDC on Polygon into Axela USDC, which is a bridged form of USDC on Ethereum. Then you'd go to Axela's website and bridge the Axela USDC to, um, I think it was Avalanche we were going to. And then you'd go to a swap protocol and you swap Axel USDC for native USDC on Avalanche. And what Squid does is it has wrapper contracts around the Axela gateway, it's called the Axela gateway contracts, which allow you to automate that whole process. So you can do the swap, the bridge, and the swap all in one click. And you can also add on more, more functions like we said, like buying NFTs and um, getting into staking positions and whatnot. So I think Axela, that's, Axela is fo focused on the core security and the ability to maintain this fully generalizable messaging. And they're connecting to more chains. They're building really amazing relay infrastructure. But Squid is more at the application layer and at the developer experience layer where if you want to add cross-chain to your app, there's a lot of things you need to do, like paying gas across chain. Um, you need to coordinate uh, contracts on multiple chains at once. You need to be able to tell the user if this transaction is complete or not, because that's not actually quite not that simple in cross-chain. You you have to realize that it's complete on the source chain, complete on Axla, and then on the destination chain, and report that in a user-friendly way. And so Squid's solving all of those issues around the developer experience and the communication of um, of cross-chain, which Axelar isn't focusing on as much. That's right. That's that's super cool. So you are you're essentially building a bunch of these wrapper contracts around the different like DEXs on on the different chains, for example. How do you, I guess, you know, choose which which DEXs to support or yeah, what what to, what to build in general? I guess because I guess there's a lot, right? You you also said like NFT buying. Um, do you already like ask your users? Do you see like I guess generally where the TVL is or something like that? How do you how do you go about that? Yeah, it's been um, it's been really simple actually. That with the DEXs, we have connected to every chain which Axela supports, um, which is most of the EVM chains, um, most of the major ones, and then we've partnered with really as many DEXs as we can on each chain. So we have partnerships with the main DEX on. Every chain now except Ethereum. We've got PancakeSwap, I think, is going public today, so I can talk about it. Um, Polygon, we've got QuickSwap, StellarSwap on Moonbeam, UbeSwap on Celo. We've got, so we just made partnerships with the, these DEXs, and the, the partnership there is we'll integrate your contracts so that um, our cross chain swap volume routes through your protocol um, and you get volume from it. and in return, you integrate our front front end widget so that you can upgrade your swap interface to have cross chain swaps as well. So we we've just gone on a integration spree, getting uh, trying to integrate as many DEXs as possible. And then in terms of the wider use cases like NFTs and staking widgets, I think for now it makes more sense for the partners to use our SDK to build a specific application with Squid. And we've got a lot of cool developer tools for that. But because every, I think it's less feasible for us to build fully generic tools for every single application out there. Like at some point we have to make decision to have a, a tool which the partner can go and customize themselves. So. Yeah, that's what we're currently shipping. We've got tools for buying NFTs, tools for staking, tools for depositing across chain. And the plan with those is to have more of a Shopify experience where you go to the Squid website and you've got this application or product you want to sell or you want to have people to be able to buy with crypto. And you take our developer tools and plug in a little bit of your code to make it custom. And then um, you'll be able to buy, buy it across chain using any token in your wallet. Right, that, that's super cool. So you already mentioned, right, there's this widget, there is a bunch of these customization ability, there's SDK 
API, I guess. So these, these are sort of the products you, you have. Can you like go a bit into them and maybe, yeah, who are the users? I guess these are essentially the, the DEXs or the apps on, on the other chains, right? Is that correct? The main products we have are the, uh, an API, which is running, a, um, is, uh, we've got a backend behind it. And this API is able to generate um, call data for, so generate a transaction which the user can sign to do um, a cross-chain swap, to do a, a purchase. And it also allows you to track the status of these transactions across chain. So that's the core core feature. And then around that, we have an SDK, which makes it really easy to build front-end apps. And, and then these front-end widgets, which are React components or iframes. And those are for front-end integrations. If you want to um, just customize it and put it into your website as fast as possible, that's your option. And the users of these, the API um, is mostly used by wallets. So we're integrated into XDeFi is coming live soon. Um, and a few other names I can't say, but some really big wallets we will be powering cross-chain transfers and swaps inside the wallet. So you never have to leave. You can, you know, this is a huge UX issue, right? You you go into your wallet and someone who's not used to crypto, they it says they have AVAX, BNB, and Matic, and they want to swap them, but they can't because they're all on different blockchains. Um, and to someone who doesn't know about crypto, that would make any sense. So and it, it, sh- it doesn't it shouldn't, doesn't have to make sense. So now that they've integrated Squid, so you'll be able to swap between any token on, in your wallet without even knowing that they're on different blockchains. Um, that's something we're really excited about is abstracting this, abstracting the chains away. Yeah, that's that's great. And congrats on, on the partnerships. We said already, right, that this wrapper contract is different DEXs. Now, I guess, like, Squid is also sort of a DEX aggregator in, in that sense where you're trying to find basically the optimal price be- between these uh, routes. Can you talk a little bit about how, how you approach that sort of problem? Is this something you're like also, like how, how much are you focusing on that? Like, I guess, optimizing the, the price that users get. So we have a, a routing backend, which is for every request comparing all the DEXs that were supported, uh, that we support um, across chains and finding the best route to route through them. And we're also doing that across chain as well. And we'll be building out the capability, especially as we support the cosmos with DEXs like Osmosis and Duality and, and Crescent. You'll be able to route your liquidity through uh, across chain to the DEX that has the best price. So it's not just the best DEXs within a chain, but the best chain to go to to do your swap. Um, and this is like a big frame shift, I think, where the application specific blockchain um, thesis, I guess, like takes, finally starts to take effect where you have chains like Osmosis who've optimized entirely for swapping and they should be able to outcompete a lot of other DEXs. And and so if they can, if they have tools like Squid to com, uh, effectively compare, compare them to other DEXs, then we can you know they can compete in the in the wider ecosystem for for swap volume, um, and yeah, we'll be doing that as well. We're we're close to launching Cosmos. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that that sounds really cool. So basically, what you're saying is because like if you swap, probably you're also paying gas fees and you know like these other costs that essentially maybe an app chain can optimize more and then. In the end, your price might be better than even if there's like like let's say less liquidity on Osmosis for a certain pair than on Ethereum, it might still be cheaper for you to go through that. And then Squid is able to you know optimize from that dimension as well. Yeah, exactly. You got gas fees are definitely a big consideration like in cross chain generally. Yeah, um, but you've also got MEV. So these app chains like Osmosis and Duality are able to optimize their consensus layer specifically so that you can do an arbitrage after each swap, for example. Osmosis has the proto-rev module and Duality have some really amazing things they're building. You're able to do things that wouldn't be possible in, in a general EVM uh, DEX. And we can 
hope, we're hoping to get some kind of revenue from sharing the the MEV from these swaps that we route through those taxes. And it also means we can get better prices because the MEV, which is captured, goes back to the user at the end of the day as well. Right. So, so you're thinking that like Squid itself would capture some some of the MEV essentially, and then you would redistribute it. Is that correct? Or yeah, I think that's an option for sure. Um, also, got other other providers um, in the EVM world who have um, backgrounding solutions. So you're able to um, be able to do a, a backgrounding arbitrage behind any swap on the EVM or most swaps, and the user still gets as good execution as they can, but the arbitrage which is created, the MEV which is created after their transaction can be returned back to them. So it's one of the ways that we're looking at um, getting revenue for Squid, but also even just improving prices for, for the users. Right, that, that's quite interesting. So I guess, yeah, that was also something that I definitely wanted to get into maybe where given your like sort of this cross-chain infrastructure and like cross-chain MEV, I guess also like a big topic where a lot of people expect uh yeah there to be a big market since i guess you know on many on the main chains you have like sort of flashboards and i guess somewhat soft maybe a bit the some of the issues that mbb has but it gets very complex in the cross-chain world so yeah i guess i was wondering also is squid like something where yeah people like searchers maybe go to like actually um you know realize cross-chain mev but or also i guess yeah you know your approach so so yeah, what is the state, I guess, right now? Or like, how do you expect it to be, to be used? Or is Squid more uh, just for, I don't know, the traders or the people that like buy the tokens, like literally the users and uh, versus like, you know, like some sophisticated market makers or something. And and they would, yeah. Yeah, I think so. so the MEV in, MEV in the cross-chain space is super early, I think. Um, we're just working out how to transfer tokens across chain effectively and reliably, let alone making like complex, like risky trades and across different chains. It's still super early, I think, and not the front of mind right now. I think, you know, I, I really enjoy reading about MEV and understanding it. And there's a lot of really concerning things that could happen to the crypto ecosystem generally. If you start getting cross chain MEV, you start getting centralization of validator sets and you get potentially a lot of the cross-chain systems could start breaking down but i think that's a long way away um realistically something interesting i've been thinking of recently with squid and mev is um around intent and so this i don't know who's been uh, who of your listeners have read about this but an intent is essentially the idea that you can express what you want and you don't express how it happens and then essentially the market just gets it done for you. It's almost like task rabbit for, um, for general compute on blockchains. And that's essentially what Squid is doing already. We have an API which lets you do anything across chain. You tell us that, and then we have this big backhand massive routing infrastructure, which just works out the best route and combines everything into one tiny package and you can get it done. So. I think what we're building is is actually really suited for that future with where MEV starts to become how things happen across chain. Um, we've we're essentially building a solver for intents. Um, and currently it's exposed via an API and you go to a front end and use the API to um, communicate what you want. But maybe in the future, there'll be an intent market where you communicate what you want there. And then Squid can be one of these solvers that is fulfilling orders that requiring cross-chain transactions. Yeah, that's quite interesting. And I guess you're, so right now the way it works, like you are essentially paying the XLR fees for the passing, like essentially uh, to the XLR valid validators. And, and then that is sort of taken into account for the swaps and whatnot. And then on top you're thinking, uh, I guess, yeah, maybe going a bit into this business model idea, what, how does Squid like generate money? Is it like, I guess, you know, what's, what sort of the options is it like, you know, MetaMask, you add like some sort of fee on top and, or this MEV ideas are, is there anything else that you can think of? Or is there also like some, some sort of additional thing you have to pay to XLR or is it it's essentially just these, these fees that XLR is charging 
Or is there like some more symbiotic thing between XLA and Squid that, that I that is there? First of all, the Squid doesn't actually pay any fees to Axler. It's the, always the user. And currently, everything is just gas fees. So there's no, no fees that are actually taken out by either of us. But I think we're really fortunate as a crypto project in that our job is to route a lot of volume and people trade via us. We'll, we'll be trading a lot via us. So it's a very simple business model. You don't have to get into crazy tokenomics. Just you just charge some basis points, um, and we don't have media plans to do that. But um, I think it's a pretty tried and true business model that we might take up. Um, something which we've had a lot of demand for is a lot of our partners are in this crypto black hole where you don't know how to charge fees, and they integrate Squid, and they're like oh, this is a way we can finally charge fees because people are you know, trading a lot in going in and out of our platform via Squid. Um, so we have refer we have not referral fees, but essentially the partner will be able to charge a fee and then we'll take a portion of that. So that is going to happen and that's being built right now. MEV, I think there's, there's um, room for that. That's how some of the ag- DEX aggregators business models work um, with back running and... and I think the last one is you mentioned gas earlier and we don't charge anything on gas, but there could be um, fees on being able to provide really efficient gas prices. So being able to predict what the gas price will be in the future, or at least taking some risk for that and being able to just guarantee a price for the user and take a cut uh, because of that. Because currently it's the gas experience in different blockchains is really variable and not not a very good user experience right right another extra section there yeah that that's quite interesting and and i do agree like the business model probably relatively simple if you have the volume then uh i guess you don't need to like overcomplicate it yeah i i think that's that's quite cool and and i guess maybe going back a little bit to the the xlr choice so if you mentioned like is there is there some chance of you guys like adopting multiple message passing like protocols i guess one could think that maybe you know some is cheaper or, or like it helps you to like even get a better price or um yeah how are you thinking about that i guess currently it seems like quite you know you're going with xlr mostly yeah maybe you can expand a little bit on your thinking there that would be interesting i, I mentioned the benefits earlier of why of having one protocol really gives us a lot of advantages. We get to focus entirely on what we're doing and it reduces the complexity in our system so we can ship faster. But we had always committed to um, integrating CCTP, which is Circle's transfer protocol. And the Axlar team have also been working with Circle and we'll be integrating CCTP so that whenever it's possible to do a, do a cross-chain swap, via CCTP, we'll use that um, if it's cheaper, obviously, or potentially if it's um, if it's fast enough as well. Because with Axla, everything we can we can do everything in under twenty seconds, and CCTP that may not be the case. So we'll be integrating that. Um, whereas we're integrating IBC, which is you know we don't necessarily see it as a competitor to Axla, but it's part of Axla is an, is a Cosmos chain and is connected to the entire Cosmos via IBC. So will be, oh, we'll be shipping this very soon, but you'll be able to swap any token between any chains uh, within the Cosmos and also between the Cosmos and EVM. And so that has been technically a similar process. We have to integrate a, a different messaging protocol to be able to implement these swaps and transfers. But I think with interoperability protocols, there's less of a reason to have multiple supported between the same two chains. Like it's not really like the DEX aggregation world where you every new chain could just have you know, a couple of devs could fork Uniswap and deploy it there and suddenly you've got like 20 different DEXs. So you have to you have to aggregate them to be able to provide any tangible experience, like any competitive experience. But with messaging protocols the core thing is actually just getting it done, getting it done really securely. So we, yeah, we didn't want to compromise on that. 
um, not, I wouldn't be comfortable integrating the other gen generalized messaging protocols when naming them just because of the security and centralization that they introduce. And yeah, we, we don't want to have the brand risk of potentially getting it and being part of a hack or even just yeah exposing our users to that. Right, right, right. That makes a lot of sense. Cool. Uh, maybe we can, yeah, get a bit into like how this, yeah, we mentioned a bit the time, right? is quite important on, in swaps. Obviously you guys are very focused on the user experience and that's probably like, I mean, after the price or maybe even on top of the price, like the most important thing to like, you know, don't take so much time. How do you like optimize it? How are you able to like do it in, in less than 20 seconds? And I guess in general, how do you improve that even further? Is that something that you're working on with XLR itself or are you doing something there or is it, yeah. What, what is like the approach there? Yeah, totally. Just introduce the problem a little bit. So the cross chain experience of bridging and, and swapping is can be really slow so that you'll go to the website, you'll say, I want to swap from say Arbitrum ETH to, um, to Polygonmatic and you click swap and then an animation appears. We've on our website, we've got this beautiful animate queue animations, which we we've made, but you'll sit there and you'll watch the animation for 22 minutes and then the swap will go through. And if you're a new user, you, you don't, you really don't know if it's worked or not, or if you've got your money until that 22 minutes is over, the user experience is like, is awful. And the reason for that is the, is because of finality. So different blockchains have different finality times in cosmos, everything is running on tendermint. And so that it has instant finality. Um, but in the Ethereum world, Ethereum mainnet has finality in about 16 minutes. Arbitrum has, uh, well, it's, it's adds up to about 22 minutes overall and Polygon six minutes. So all of these times that they're just far too long to have any competitive edge over say web two, if we want to have a system, which is going to be used a lot by normal people. And the reason finality is important in cross chain is that if the bridge is going to give you money on the destination chain, the bridge needs to be sure that it's received money on the source chain. So it's only once that the payment that's received on the source chain is finalized that it can credit you money on the on the destination chain. And so that's why we have these 20 minute lags with swaps um, and squid. And we we've worked on this with Axla. They've built a lot of the tech, but we the the architecture is um, you have another wrapper contract between Squid and Axla, which essentially allows a service provider to witness your source chain transaction as soon as it's been included on the chain before it's reached finality. And then they can provide the bridged funds out of their own wallet on the destination chain. And they can execute the exact payload which you've requested. So, um, and that they can prove that they've done exactly what the bridge would have done in 15 minutes time. And they register that against the contract. So you get, um, you get your bridged funds, you get them executed however you want. Maybe it's a swap. And then 15 minutes later, when the bridge funds come through, they get diverted over to the service providers to pay them back. So it's, it's a bit like a loan, which has been collateralized by a cross chain transaction. And if you can prove that you've loaned for this specific transaction, then when that transaction comes through, you get paid back and you can take a premium over that. Right. That's, that's quite cool. And that these like service providers as a, this is like, you know, I don't know, market makers or like who are these users like utilizing that? Is that like something like that? Yeah, right now we're running them internally, um, Axlara, and the design has a lot of similarities to, to this intent system that I told you about. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's very much like the user declares on a chain somewhere that they want something done and then it just happens immediately. Um, and then, so the service provider takes some of the risk. Yeah. So it, it is currently in about, uh, it takes about 10 seconds, um, you, on average up to 20 seconds down to like four seconds, which is totally insane. Um, but we can get it down to basically instantaneous because if you, if you sign the transaction and send it off to a different, um, to the relay app, then the relay can s send both transactions on source and destination at the same time. There's, 
definitely technicalities that come in when you start to do things like that. That's like really aggressive, but I think we can um, in the future get the, the transaction down, times down to essentially instantly across chain. Um, there's no, no reason why you can't provide that service. Which I'm super excited about. It's like the kind of thing which... That, that's quite big, right? I, I think that's... You know, essentially also, if you think of across your MEV, I guess often the idea is that, okay, how do I guarantee, I guess, the execution on, on both sides uh, in, in like an atomic way? So I guess this infrastructure could sort of help you do that as well, which might be quite a, a big use case. Um, cool. Yeah, that, that's very cool that, that you guys are, are focusing on. And then, then that... I guess these are, the risk they're taking is essentially just, okay, you get paid a bit later when it actually arrives on your destination chain, but, and you take like a small, like, I guess, premium on that, right? That's what you said. Okay. Yeah. The, there's no, there's no change in the security. So you, you're never at risk of losing funds. Um, but there's, they can be, um, the, the service provider can decide not to fulfill it. So. Maybe you have to wait the full twenty minutes if if they break something or two. Can can service providers compete among each other between like, or do you have to like choose one that like will like execute this? Yeah, you can't. Yeah, so I think that's how we built this minimum viable product of almost this intact system, right? You, it's you declare in advance. You pay one provider. You say, yeah, you you pay them in advance. So yeah, we, we've got we've got the designs for opening it up and making it so that any service provider can um, fulfill these transactions. But right now, we're just you know we're, we're just, it works really well, so we're doing that for now. Right, right, right. Yeah, be pragmatic here, and you're already working on a lot. So like that's that's awesome. Yeah, that's quite cool. That, thanks. That's that's very interesting. Okay, and then yeah, I think. We probably covered a lot about like the basics. I think you know, uh, maybe some some anecdotes. You know, I, I recently read your tweets, or like I guess there were some issues with like some of the assets of like other of the bridges protocols, and you know, Squid was sort of or like X Line Squid were the ones still active. Can you sort of expand what what the issues were with this other bridges protocols and and why sort of the XLR design? Uh, wasn't affected by that? Um, maybe, yeah. Yeah, of course. So what happened was multi-chain, which is a the name of a, another a bridging protocol, had some issues where users weren't able to transfer across chains. I won't go into why that happened. I don't know if, if anyone knows yet. Maybe they do. But any essentially, the assets on a bunch of chains were frozen you couldn't move them around you couldn't um exit as it were like and so what happened was users the the multi-chain price fell and users were trying to get out and get to safety to ethereum or something like this and some the really interesting thing that happened was a lot of our competitors people who run other routing protocols but using different systems other than axela had to stop and the reason for it was that they run point-to-point -point systems, which so the the underlying network, um, not squid, not the squid level, but the axle level is running in a point-to-point -point system rather than a hub and spoke system. And if you have a point-to-point -point system, then every every connection is unaware of the all the other connections. So um, say you're on Phantom, which all the USDC on Phantom was collateralized by multi-chain, so it was. Uh, like hugely at risk and same multi-chain has like the hack essentially makes multi-chain usdc really cheap so it's it's as if you can get infinite multi-chain usdc this is the attack factor and in a point to point system you could tell all the points that you have the full supply of usdc on phantom like you own it and you're going to bridge it out to this real chain and and then swap it for real usdc on the other side and then in a point to point system you'll be able to get drain all of the liquidity on all of the points. But in the hub and spoke model like Axela, since um, you limit the liquidity that you can drain to the particular spoke, because you're swapping it in the squid model, you could only 
swap all the multi-chain USDC for Axler USDC on Phantom and then bridge the Axler USDC over. So that Axler USDC was still like at peg, it was still secure. Um, and so the only thing you could steal was this, the amount of Axler USDC we have in the liquidity pool on, on Curve on Phantom. And so Squid had a really good few days where most of the other protocols had to actually shut down every chain just so just to stop this attack from happening. happening. And we got a lot of volume through, yeah, through Phantom. We actually just stayed running through the whole thing, even though multi-chain USDC was at really high risk. We had, you know, traders and arbitrage people who were were keeping keeping the pools fairly balanced. So we got a lot of low volume that day and. Uh, it was cool, cool to see Axelar's design and like foresight actually play out in a real situation. Right. That yeah, that's super interesting to to see that. I guess there were also like other hacks where this sort of drain system, like I guess the wormhole hack was sort of like that too, if I remember correctly. That you know you basically could mint infinite and then sort of drain the liquidity from other chains. So yeah, very very. Very interesting to see it in practice, I guess, because yeah, in theory, uh, many people can claim many things, and maybe it gets too confusing for for many, or like people don't even look into it. So if if you see the it in practice, then obviously that's that's great, and and um, yeah, that's a that's a cool cool episode, cool like proof of the the XLR, um architecture. So yeah, I guess we we covered a lot about like the architecture infrastructure. I, I think. Maybe uh, we can slowly like get to wrapping up. I think what would be really interesting is sort of, um, you know, the use cases you you guys see. I think you're like already talking about a little, obviously the swapping, uh, but also you know purchasing NFTs cross chain. Is there anything else you want to highlight on sort of the the use case front that you guys are thinking about or that people in the Squid ecosystem are working on? Yeah, the other use cases, I mean, it's anything you can do single chain, you can now do cross chain, you can pay with them into a chain. So we're, we're trying to limit it to certain things just so that we can focus. And I think staking is a really interesting one. So the liquid staking providers, uh, lending protocols, and whatever other staking product that is out there, you can, we've got a bunch of partners doing this, but you can essentially with whatever token you have in your wallet, you can get this staking product. So it shifts a little bit this mental model from, say you have ETH in your wallet and you want to lend it, you have money in your wallet and you want to buy this lending product. You want to get a, a loan, which is denominated in ETH, and you can get this API on, on that ETH. So like I like this idea of the shifting the focus on the onto the product instead of onto the token so you have all these different use cases and you just have money in your wallet and you want to use the use case use the product so staking is one uh derivatives exchanges are another so worked with vela exchange and arbitrum and working with a bunch of other exchanges um where in a derivatives exchange you essentially need to stake usdc as collateral to be able to trade derivatives and we're doing that across chains so you can move between markets in a single click and cosmos is something i'm really excited for because you have all these different app chains which have really specific use cases but the onboarding experience has been like if you thought it was bad in the evm world like it's think again like the cosmos world it's insane so hard to get assets into a chain to try something and get gas so um i think every cosmos chain would benefit from and probably like we're speaking with all of them they'll be able to onboard users from the EVM world in a single click, and then hopefully this like, app chain technology starts to get use. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, that sounds super cool. I'm I'm very excited for the future of Squid and you know what you already achieved in in such a short time. So yeah, really cool to see like this whole like idea of I guess the modular architectures in a way where many people talk about and sort of you guys I I feel like are. Um, like one of the earlier adopters of something like that, where you really like use utilize like the XLRs piece, and and you can sort of expand on on a lot of other things. So that's I think uh, a great like choice you made there, and it seems to like pay off. So yeah, very excited for you guys. 
um thanks for coming on and and diving deeper into into how it all works and yeah hope to hope to have you back on on every center maybe in 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 a few years when when it's all like even further um cross-chained everything <laughs> and see see where you guys are at so yeah thanks big for for being here yeah sounds good thanks a lot felix it's fun to chat